Hey, what's going on everybody? In this episode, I'm gonna be talking about some of the top languages you should learn for 2020. It is a new decade, so commit yourself to learning something new. Now, as a warning, this is my opinion, so I know you guys don't understand how that works, but just because I say a language that you don't necessarily agree with doesn't necessarily mean I'm a terrible person and, de and deserve to die. So try to keep that in mind in the comment section, but I would encourage some discussion. Let me know if you agree with these languages and also, what languages do you think are, are going away? What languages do you think are, are up and coming? Let me know in the comments below. So before we get started, please check out our sponsor for this episode. Thinkful should be your go-to resource for securing a job in tech. The thing about Thinkful is that they succeed when you succeed. It's their job to get you a position in software engineering, data science, data analytics, product design, or product management. Whatever your goal might be, Thinkful is there to guide you through the process beginning to end. So go look at their courses and see if one fits your needs. The great thing here is that you get a position in tech or you get your tuition back. So there's no risk to going through Thinkful. Check them out, I'll leave a link in the description. So the first category of languages I wanted to talk about is mobile languages. So meaning mobile development. Now there's a million different ways you can create mobile applications now. The, the basis of it all is, hey, you use Swift for Apple apps, iOS apps, and you use Java for Android apps, or now Kotlin. So those are the, the native languages, but there's so many different ways to do it. So for example, just some books that I've been researching, and I'm not suggesting you go buy all these, but as someone who's creating content on these, these books are, are tremendously helpful. One of which is Flutter, and this is a thing by Google where you use the Dart programming language to create cross-platform native applications. So if you want to create iOS and Android applications, but you don't want to have to learn Swift and Kotlin, then you might want to look into something like Flutter. But other than that, I would highly suggest people look into the Kotlin programming language. Here's a book. I haven't read this one yet, but it, it definitely seems pretty good. And the, uh, the Big Nerd Ranch has a pretty good brand. Um, but Kotlin is is kind of kind of like the replacement for Java in ways in that it's becoming the the most popular popular language of choice for Android development but of course you can do much other different things with it so if you have experience in Java or you're considering learning Java you might want to look into Kotlin first so for, for mobile applications I would recommend Kotlin as well as just a general purpose programming language I recommend Kotlin now, if you, if you want to develop on iOS as well, you can learn Swift with that, or you could try something like Flutter, which would allow for the cross-platform development. Now, if you have some experience in other programming languages, you can usually figure out a way to develop a mobile application with it. So for example, if you have experience in JavaScript, look into something such as React Native. I'm not the world's biggest fan of this option, uh, mainly because uh, JavaScript is the most terrible language there is. Don't at me. The uh, hype for JavaScript, I don't understand. I I've used it. I have a JavaScript tutorial series on YouTube. I personally find it confusing and challenging. And maybe that's why so many people like it. I don't know. But that is another option if you already have JavaScript experience and you want to get into the mobile application development. So to conclude mobile development, I would suggest Kotlin as well as Dart with Flutter. Now, another big category, which I actually talked about in my last year's episode is blockchain cryptocurrency, that area of study. And for that, I would suggest the language Solidity. So this is a language used to create smart contracts on the Ethereum blockchain. If that sounds like a bunch of mumbo jumbo, then this is probably the great thing for you to focus on in 2020. I have two episodes that can get you started with cryptocurrency, which isn't the exact same thing as blockchain, but it uses blockchain technology. So you can check out my how to buy Bitcoin video, as well as my introduction to Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies video. So essentially the whole concept of a blockchain is just imagine a database where you continually append data and you can't go back and erase data. It's just you always add new records to this thing in a chain. That's the concept of a blockchain, but it's also distributed meaning that we don't have a centralized node that has all of the power over the data. Instead, that responsibility is dispersed among the nodes that are part of the blockchain network. Definitely recommend you look into Solidity for that. The Ethereum blockchain is one of the, the most popular routes for this, um, and it allows you to build applications with distributed network capabilities very easily. Going down the route of blockchain, you can also use this to create cryptocurrencies that can be used inside of your application to buy certain things or to have some value 
inside of your app and maybe even in the real world to be traded on different exchanges. So a lot of people gave me some crap for saying Solidity last year, but I'm still going to stick with that one. I, I do believe this is where a lot of app development is going. And unfortunately, I believe there's a lot of people that don't realize it or are resistant to the idea because they're scared. You scared of the blockchain because you don't understand it. Well, it's confusing, but fortunately I have those two cryptocurrency videos and I also have some interviews on blockchain and other stuff like that. So check out my content on my channel. Don't neglect it because it is uh, one of the hot topics. The, the advertising in this market is insane. My one Bitcoin video is my highest earning video per view out of all the videos I have on my channel. So even if the general software developer does not realize the value in this, a lot of the startup companies do realize the value of this and they're competing insanely for the marketing space, the advertising space to try to grow their blockchain startup companies. So if you are interested in that startup environment, I would highly recommend you study that and get some experience. All right, and now I'm going to uh, regret what I said earlier about JavaScript because the next section I wanted to talk about was websites. Now, web development is very saturated. Everybody's a web developer or a full stack developer, but there is a select part of this that I'm interested in, and that is progressive web apps. So a progressive web app is you basically build a web application like you normally would, but there are some key components that you make sure your application has that allows it to be used as an app on a mobile device. So it's similar to a web app that you can go into the Chrome app, go to the web address and it works, but it's different in that you actually will have an icon on the home screen and it works just like a normal app. And tons of apps are being built this way and it allows for more cross-platform abilities. Now the general support for a progressive web app on Android and iOS has been a little questionable, but they are beginning to adopt this as a standard best practice even. So the ability to do this now is a lot higher. So what before might have been an application that you would just have to visit through Google Chrome and add like a shortcut as an icon to the homepage has now become its own actual app on the App Store that uses the same code base that you can have in your actual web application. Now you're able to get a larger market share because you have a working website, you have a responsive website so you can check it out on mobile or on a tablet, but you also have an app all from a single code base. So with that, you should probably learn JavaScript and all those other things with that because it's essentially important for the world that we live in today. So although my personal taste is I don't super like JavaScript, that doesn't necessarily mean it's not useful or valuable in the market. To me, it's almost like it's something everyone should know. It's a prerequisite of a web developer. If you're going into web development and you're studying HTML and CSS, stop, go study your JavaScript. The HTML and CSS is important, especially if you're going into design, but so much of the design pieces now is integrated with JavaScript. You can't really do it effectively without JavaScript. That's just my personal opinion. I know you can do animations and stuff with CSS, but so much of the websites are becoming JavaScript oriented. So there's lots of different JavaScript stuff you can learn. You can learn Vue, you can learn React, you can learn Angular, you can learn whatever new framework there is every 12 seconds. Go study that and master it. But first, before you go study all this progressive web app stuff and these frameworks, learn vanilla JS, meaning the, the normal JavaScript. So go study your normal JavaScript, understand inheritance through prototypes, understand objects and classes, also understand the this keyword, what that means in all the different contexts, and understand scoping, all these different things you need to understand in order to effectively develop in something such as React. I started learning React and I completely failed because I didn't understand any of the JavaScript stuff. So I was like, I'm done with this React stuff, I'm gonna go learn JavaScript. Now, I could probably pick up any of the frameworks and learn it much easier because I understand the fundamentals. Understanding normal JavaScript is also going to give you a huge step up from the competition because when a new framework comes out, you'll be able to pick it up much quicker. So as for the third option here, I'm not really giving a specific language, but JavaScript is kind of a thing, but overall just learn the entire web development architecture and the different languages and components that go into that. Also, I encourage you guys to take all the principles I've explained in this video and apply them to your own portfolio or your own online business or whatever it might be. 
to basically use your skills to grow a business or grow your influence, which will help you in a job search or if you're trying to make money online, knowing these skills is invaluable. So that's all I got for you guys in this episode. Do you agree with what I said or do you think I'm just full of a bunch of garbage? Very well could be, I don't know. So leave a comment in the comment section below and be sure to subscribe if you've enjoyed this content. I have tutorial series on tons of different things we've talked about. I got some Android stuff, I got some crypto stuff, and I got some web development stuff with JavaScript. So go check those out and be sure to subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.